So what are we up to today? Well, I'm going into a little bit of a mad scientist mode. Um, I saw a video from a guy called Tech Ingredients a while back, and this intrigued me. It seemed a, a little bit too good to be true, but watching his video and watching a couple of his other videos, uh, the guy was very thorough in how he went about this and how he tested it. Uh, he put a lot of time and effort into this whole thing and was pretty impressed with the results. Uh, it's, it's definitely hard to tell through YouTube how good it actually sounds, but it sounded good enough that I want to give it a go. So this is uh, some DIY speakers. Um, his, his video I'll link down below for sure, but it's uh, the best speakers that you can make for less than $30. And I said, you know what, if nothing else, if these don't work for stereo speakers, um, it looks like they'll be really good for possibly home theater applications. So I decided to give this a go. So what do we have here? I'm, I'm going to try and not recreate his video. I really encourage you to go watch his video. There's actually two of them. He has the first one, uh, best speakers for under $30, and then he's got one later on. Uh, best speakers you can make for under $115, where he expands on the idea. Uh, the second one is actually better. But, um, yeah, so it, it really breaks down to the magic in the box. And what the magic in the box is, let's take a quick look here. These are not your ordinary speakers. What this uses is these little deals here, if we can get the box open. And these are audio exciters. And basically what you do is you just take this, it has some adhesive, and you can tack it onto any surface. Now Tech Ingredients went through and did all kinds of experiments with various products and various substances and he came up with this stuff uh, this foam insulation that you can get at any Home Depot for five bucks a square uh, these themselves I bought the, the slightly upgraded versions uh, these cost me closer to 20 some odd dollars but you can get the cheaper ones for like I, I think they're eight dollars plus seven dollar shipping and basically all I need for this is some sandpaper, some measuring, some glue, some hooks, and uh, the frying pan is just because I needed an eight inch circle. I'm trying to do this exactly the same way he did it. So this was the only eight inch circle that I could find and a soldering iron. And I got some speaker wire around here someplace I'll have to use as well. So I'm gonna start on this. Basically the, the first thing we're gonna do is the foam board. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it up like he had, and try and sand it down, and we'll see uh, we'll see where it goes. So step one complete. Um, I, I wasn't necessarily gonna film this part, but I have to mention, I figure it's important to go through all of this uh, for anyone thinking about doing this themselves. So I, I measured and rounded the corners, and, and I gotta tell you, it seriously took me less than five minutes. Uh, this stuff, this stuff cuts very, very easily. And all I used was a, a 79 cent utility knife from, from Walmart that I picked up eons ago that happened to be sitting in my toolbox. Stupid easy thus far. So now I'm gonna go ahead and sand down the edges to, to clean them up. And one of the things he said was to take the front surface of it and to sand over it to rough it up a little bit. Um, he used an orbital sander. I don't have any power tools like that. So I'm just gonna hand sand it and we'll see how, how far it takes us, how difficult it is and how long. But for step one, seriously, less than five minutes, stupid easy. Okay, so we're done sanding now. Uh, learned a couple of things along the way. Um, first of all, I, I started off with 120 grit sandpaper and I gotta tell you, it's, it's too much. Uh, I thought I would use this to kind of grind down the corners and I was doing it by hand. The problem is though, if at any point you wind up getting a crease in the sandpaper like I did here, that edge will dig into this stuff and, and create a nasty little gouge. So I, I switched off of this, went to the 220, 
and uh, found found a scrap piece. I cut a, an end off of a pool noodle that I had. And then just wrapped the sandpaper around that and used this as a sanding block and just kind of did a back and forth motion while, while twisting it, keeping the paper tight on there. And it's just about the right size, so it, it fit on there perfectly. Um, the one thing I will also mention, if you happen to have a nick on one of the corners, it, it doesn't have to be large, but if you're not paying attention and you go over it, it'll rip a chunk out. So it is a little bit fragile in that sense. So be very, very cautious when you're doing the edges. And uh, other than that, it sanded down real easy. I mean, to do to both of these, I did the entire front surface, beveled the edges a little bit all the way around, and rounded the corners off and smoothed those up. And it took me, uh, I've been trying to time this, as near as I can tell, it took me about 10 minutes, and that includes trying to find this piece so that I could finish it off. So thus far, we're up to 15 minutes worth of, worth of effort. The only other thing I will say is this creates a lot of static electricity, which is good, because what winds up happening is the dust all sticks to it. So I would not be uncomfortable doing this like on a dining room table or something inside the house, and then take the panel off occasionally, take it outside and just kind of shake it off and tap it. Um, I wound up taking a paper towel that was damp and just kind of wiped off all of the dust. So feel free to do this indoors. I took this out to the garage because I wasn't sure. I could have I could have done this in the house in the air conditioning. And it's, uh, it's starting to get kind of hot out here. But anyways, let's push on. Um, I'm gonna clean these off again and then we're gonna go ahead and install the the audio exciters and uh, oh, first I got to measure where I'm sticking these things first so I'm gonna go ahead and measure it and then stick these on and then we'll go through solder it up and try them out all right so I cleaned them up a little bit more and mounted the exciters uh, there is a trick to how to do these and where to place them I'm not gonna give you details because I want you to go to tech ingredients video and watch it but there is a, there is a method to the madness and they do not just wind up going dead center and they don't just arbitrarily get put someplace. So go watch Tech Ingredients video and learn where to place these. But now that these are placed, and honestly in hindsight I probably should have soldered first, but I'm going to solder some wire onto these or uh, I might have some ends that will fit on that laying around here, but let me check. Uh, either way, let me get them wired and then uh, then I'll put the, the hangers on it, and depending on how sturdy they feel, I may go ahead and try it, or I may let it sit for a while and let the glue dry up on that. So thus far, again, um, sanding took 10 minutes, mounting these things took less than five minutes, so we're less than 20 minutes into this project thus far. And pretty well done. So let me go on to the next step and we'll see what happens. All right, so I've gone ahead, I soldered on the speaker wire, but I gotta tell you, um, highly, highly, highly recommend finding some blades that you can crimp onto the ends of the cable. Uh, the audio exciters is very is a little bit sensitive to heat. Uh, there's some very soft plastic there that started, uh, started moving around a little bit. Uh, I really did not like. So um, I think at some point, I don't have blades that'll fit this, but at some point I'm definitely going to unsolder that, clean it up, and put some blades on it to stick stick the wires on and off. But uh, for now it has to do, it'll have to do. I went ahead and I put the hanging hooks on, measured those out, and stuck those in. I did wind up using a little bit of glue. I'm just nervous about it, and I didn't use anything special. Um, I don't know if you can see over here, but I just used regular old Elmer's glue. I didn't pre-drill holes. I, I didn't do any of that. So I, I want to make this as amateur as possible so anybody could do this in their house without any special tools and which is another reason not to use solder um, because not everybody has a soldering gun and they they can't necessarily very easily do that but you can find some clips that you can crimp on with a pair of needle nose pliers that'll work just as well probably better than this and that's actually what i'm going to wind up doing so no special tools involved uh, just a razor some sandpaper a measuring tape and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to let this glue set for a little bit and then we're going to take them inside, hook them up to the amp and uh, give it a listen, see what happens. All right, so I'm, I'm a little impatient. Um, that glue isn't fully set, but I, I'm tired of waiting. So uh, 
I also decided while I was sitting here waiting for it that I'm not going to try this inside on one of my good amplifiers. Uh, one, it's a pain in the butt to get it out to hook the wires in. And two, uh, the Macintosh amp. These are 4 ohm impedance and it's currently set up on 8 ohm. And for me to pull that out and switch the wires is just too much of a pain in the butt. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's give this a whirl. I'm pretty impressed. Look at you now. Look you it's uh, it's definitely missing some low end to it, which was expected. But wow! Wow! Well, first impression on a, on a shitty Goodwill amplifier in, in my garage, which is about the worst acoustics you could have, it's a little bright on the high end, definitely missing the low end, but again, that was expected. Um, you, you need to use larger and different shapes to, to sort of bring out the bottom end of this, but I think combined with a subwoofer, that's all right. Now I'm interested in hooking them up to the good amp and uh, taking a look. So we're... I'm gonna do that. I don't know if that'll make it into the video or not, but uh, huh, for 30 bucks? Hell yeah.